Hey everyone, Miss Go Electric here. I'm close to the top of Pikes Peak and behind me you'll see the Ford Supervan, which is the fourth generation. But this is the second iteration of it because it was first announced for Goodwood and it raced there, but they need some tweaking for this particular mountain race. And let me tell you a little bit about Pikes Peak if you haven't heard of it before. This isn't the first time an EV has raced here, but an electric Supervan, it's definitely the first time. Seen here from Colorado Springs, Colorado, is Pikes Peak, known as America's Mountain, as referenced in the patriotic anthem, America the Beautiful. A businessman named Spencer Penrose built a toll road to the summit for tourists a little over a hundred years ago during the advent of the automobile. As a marketing effort, he set up a race and tempted drivers with a $2,000 prize for the fastest time to the top. Those winnings would equate to about $60,000 today. Plus, he offered one of the most impressive trophies in the world. Celebrating its 101st year, the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb now features just about every kind of vehicle capable of doing the job quickly. Ford has been involved since the start of the second oldest race in America. They had five entrants in year one, and a Ford Model T claimed the overall record in 1922, with a time of 19 minutes and 50 seconds. There have been countless attempts and records broken since. As you might have guessed, I'm here for the EVs. No matter what track you're looking at anywhere across the globe, the chances are that the overall fastest lap times are held by an electric car. Now, electric cars have been racing at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb since the 1980s, but the one that you see behind me was actually one of the first lithium ion battery equipped race cars for the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. And it actually set a record for electric vehicles back in 2002. This is the Compact Power ER2. Inside, the powertrain includes LG Chem pouch cells, and it's paired with a motor by AC Propulsion. That's the company that Tesla came from. Beating the 10 minute barrier was a challenge and continues to be, but the man to do it first in an EV was Nobuhiro Monster Tajima. His feat only led to more achievements over the years for EVs until the most coveted of them all was finally secured. That is when in 2018, Roman Dumas captured the overall record at Pikes Peak in the Volkswagen IDR. All right, the team is prepped and they are putting the tires on. Roman is in the car, he's getting situated. They're gonna be pulling this out soon and do their practice run here for the first part of the day. And they're gonna go up the top sector. As you'll see, the social media team at Ford Performance is getting some footage. There's also a documentary that's being shot about the Supervan. And since this is the next iteration of Supervan 4, it's probably a good story to tell here because it's specifically designed to go up Pikes Peak. But they still have the tire blankets on because it's freezing up here. It's so perfect that they're keeping the tires warm. The driver in the driver's seat behind me is Roman Dumas, and he is no stranger to setting records in electric vehicles in motorsports. He actually is the record holder for Pikes Peak in the Volkswagen IDR. And so he's the perfect driver for this, not only because of that, but also because he set electric lap records at Nürburgring. He is a decorated champion when it comes to a Le Mans or World Endurance championships. Also, he does a lot of rally driving, so he's very experienced and is the perfect fit for this task.
Rowan just took off. He's on his first practice run on the top sector. We're right now at Devil's Playground, so he's making his way up. He's got a couple more rounds to do today, but that was very cool to see and hear the sound of that super van. We're here for practice days for the next couple of days, but I want to learn a little bit more about this van because this is technically the next generation of Supervan 4, and it is specifically designed to be catered towards this mountain. Let me talk about the history of Supervan first. The Ford Transit is a beloved nameplate in Europe and is the best-selling van there. But the Supervan is no ordinary transit. The Ford team in Europe launched the first Supervan back in 1971 with a 5.4-liter GT40 V8 engine in the back of a transit van. It was immediately the world's fastest van and they took it to tracks and drag strips around Britain showcasing 400 brake horsepower and 150 mile per hour top speeds. In 1980, in 1984, Supervan 2 made its debut with a Formula One derived Cosworth engine. This version hit speeds of up to 174 miles per hour at the legendary Silverstone racetrack. Supervan 3 made an entrance in 1994 with the next generation Formula One Cosworth engine on board and made the rounds until 2001. After a hiatus spanning decades, Ford introduced Supervan 4 at the 2022 Goodwood Festival of Speed Hill Climb, which was based on the Transit Custom and included an all-electric powertrain. This latest version had a quad motor setup provided by Stard that produced nearly 2,000 horsepower, being able to sprint from zero to 60 miles per hour in under two seconds. The same driver we see today at Pikes Peak, Roman Dumas, achieved a time of 46.58 seconds at Goodwood. It was the sixth fastest time and was only just over a second slower than the second fastest car at the Festival of Speed. Did I mention, this is a big van? It took a lot of work to develop a version of Supervan 4, which could excel on through 156 turns over 12 miles and 14,000 feet of elevation at Pikes Peak Hill Climb. I sat down with Mike Norton, Ford Performance's WRC Program Supervisor, Motorsports Regulation and Homologation, to find out what has changed. Supervan 4 was built for, you know, I call it because when we got the brief, it essentially was the Swiss army knife of supervans. You know, it needed to uh, race on a track, do hill climb. You know, it needed to go on a rally stage. It needed a tow bar. It needed package compartment. You know, it needed a fully functional, fully operational Ford Pro sync system. You know, and it has all of that. You know, it has got absolutely everything. Not only that, it's road legal. Yeah. You know, you can drive that vehicle on the public highway because it is built to the right regulations and the right specification. So all the events we've done with that car have, or that van, have all been centered around its uniqueness. Um, but when you want to come to somewhere like Pikes Peak, you need a specific vehicle. I mean, we did come with a purpose, uh, and that was to beat the Pikes Peak Open record. So the first thing was it needed to be much lighter. So, you know, we've taken out a lot of weight out of the chassis. Um, we wanted obviously the aerodynamics the, the the you know the race starts at 11,000 something feet you know up to 14,000 something feet so you need a completely different aero package um and what we didn't need was things like tow bar um you know we, we're building an out and out race vehicle so our biggest mission was to get the vehicle as light as we possibly could because everybody knows that you know that sucks energy um and then in terms of the, the power and performance, that's where our partners at Stard are just you know, fantastic. They do all the modeling for the energy, for the powertrain. And once you do that modeling, you end up with a certain, okay, the battery was fixed at you know, 50 kilowatt hours. But then once they've done their simulations, in terms of the weight, as soon as you take a motor out, there goes 35 kilograms. You, know, you, you can't use the power of Supervan 4 all the way up the mountain. 2000 horsepower is, I won't say undrivable, but on some of the turns and some of the corners, you, you could never use the energy. So it's no point having it. What you want to do is reduce the weight, reduce the energy, get to the energy point you can use, and then maximize that for, the, for as much of the run as you can. And that's where we got to. And what do you think the changes that you've made, or the, just even starting from the regular version of Supervan 4, what do those learnings have brought you to basically advance electrification in the means that we might see in the consumer level of the road cars that you produce. Is there anything that you're learning that you could bring to the table there? 
as you, yeah. you mentioned, regenerative braking. You know, in terms of how that reacts when the driver wants to do certain input functions, he wants the van or the, or the, or the regenerative braking and the hydraulic braking to, to work together. So, you know, we've been working on that for days and days. So that's all learning that, that will end up going towards our road cars because it, it's something we have knowledge of um, and that knowledge will get spread around the company. And I think it's interesting your point to regenerative braking and just in general in motorsports, you know, when you think of driving and you want to slow down a little bit, typically you're going to have a transmission where you can downshift and you can kind of control the speed a little bit more, but it's a little bit different on supervan and electric vehicles in general, because typically you have a single speed or in the case of the first generation of supervan, you had a two speed on the rear set of motors. So is there still that same kind of setup in this particular? This one, well, this one's single speed front and rear. Okay. So from that point of view, you know, we, we don't need the two speed. Um, and in, in terms of the regenerative braking, you know, I think we're up to now almost 600 kilowatts. You know, it's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> well, it is insane. But, and that's the bit that that's where the tuning becomes quite difficult. Yeah. Because when you do want that regenerative braking and Roman wants to roll in a corner more freely, we're finding that, that the braking, the force is still too high. So again, there's just so much tuning we can do. And I think for the Ford Performance guys, it will be invaluable. We've taken out almost 400 kilograms from Supervan 4 to 4.2 is almost 400 kilograms. Wow, yeah, that's a good chunk. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> what would you say would be the impact of setting a record on Sunday? So many people have had an involvement in helping with rapid manufacturing, with steering, with, with component supply, with your procurement. It's just huge. So, you know, and there's lots of people that they want a poster, they just want a level of involvement. And not only that, doing this kind of project really, that it enthuses employees. They really get behind it because it's different. The team spent all week on the mountain, on track, and in the garage testing and optimizing Supervan 4.2 for a shot at securing a record on America's mountain this year. Bright and early on Sunday, the hill climb would begin. Roman qualified second overall. On race day, the skies and roads were clear for an ideal run. The Pikes Peak Open Division record stood at 9 minutes and 24 seconds. Roman and the team at Ford Performance smashed that at a record time of an astounding 8 minutes and 47 seconds. In fact, production-based Supervan 4.2 was only seven seconds off 2023's overall top performer from the Unlimited division. Now, Roman Dumas holds the overall record as well as Unlimited and Open divisions. He has the first and second best times for EVs on the mountain. Supervan 4.2 is the fastest production-based competitor to ever climb the hill, securing its title as fastest van in the world as it had been in the 70s. This weekend at Pikes Peak, we saw a van shatter records and that's exactly what we need to reset people's expectations. That's what it takes to move electrification forward. I can't wait to see more wild projects like this and if you know of any, please let me know in the comments so I can check them out. Well, until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.